and welcome to the For Fun of Knit podcast. My name is Linda. I'm coming to you from Surrey, British Columbia, which is a city just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you very much. If this is your first time joining the podcast, thank you for looking it up and taking a chance and, and checking it out. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate uh, the continued um, interest and all the comments that you've been sending me. It's been fabulous, fabulous. So thank you. I am known as Nena Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. For those of you that have been watching for a while, you know that this is a podcast all about fun of yarn and knitting and has there's no political or social commentary <laughs> you're going to get from me or, or on this podcast. Um, there are lots of podcasters that provide that content, which I appreciate. I watch it and I love hearing the differences of opinions. I learn a lot that way. But for me, from my little corner of the YouTube world, it is strictly for just the enjoyment of yarn and the fun that knitting and relaxation that knitting, knitting brings. I also do this podcast because I wanted to sort of share my journey in knitting. I'm learning a ton about knitting. Every project I take is a, I learn a new skill, uh, all the yarn. I'm learning so much about yarn, more on that later. Um, and about the different types of yarn and sheep and I'm learning lots about the different dyers and I did I had no concept when I started knitting how big this industry was and how much art there is in the yarn in everything from the raising the sheep to the the science and the art of raising the sheep to the science and the art of dyeing yarn um, and then the art and science again of actually knitting and turning it into a garment so I love it I just am so thrilled with knitting that I just love to share it and so hopefully that appeals to you. So with no further ado, this episode, if this is your first episode, this is not my normal episode. I normally do the very traditional style where I go over finished objects and whips and progress and what's next on my needles and acquisitions, etc. So check out some previous episodes if that's what you're looking for. This one is a supplemental. Hopefully it's not going to be too long. <laughs> I keep trying to keep them short, but that doesn't seem to work. Um, this one is about a, just a little bit about yarn and I wanted to open up a box of yarn that I received that in my previous podcast, I think I labeled it as the most expensive yarn I've ever purchased. So thank you to my viewers who were trying to guess what was in the box. This is the box that I received. And it's not an unexpected box, so I will go into that, but I don't really remember what's in here. So let's get right into it. Oh, before we do that, no, I'm not gonna get right into it. Before I do that, I'm gonna talk about what I'm wearing because I'm gonna take it off, it's too hot. <laughs> I wanted to share, this is one of my very first knits uh, that I ever did, and it's made with Cascade Eco Wool in three different colors. I think there's a, a brownish, a greenish, and a, and a cream. Don't ask me the colors. I don't have them anymore. But this is the Hudson by Shannon Cook. Highly recommend this pattern, certainly if you're a beginner knitter, but regardless, I would recommend this pattern. You can make it your very own. The stripes don't have to be done the way the pattern is. I just made up my own striping. But this is the actual shawl. Honestly, it's a shanklet. A, sh a blanket shawl? A shawl? Shanklet? I, I can't remember what Stephen West calls it. It's a sh shanklet. It is massive. And I do believe I did a few extra rows because I didn't really know what I was doing. But my mother made one as well and it was massive. Anyway, so mine, funny, in my last episode I was trying to figure out what my favorite color is and here yet again I have something else that's green. Maybe green is my favorite color, I don't know yet. But anyway, so this is just a massive shawl that's fun to knit because it's literally just um, stocking stitch and then a lot of really big eyelets. And I literally sleep in this thing. This is my morning get up in the morning, I'm cold, lie in bed at night when I'm reading, I'm cold, I fall asleep in this, I use it as a blanket on my chair here in my knitting room when I'm cold, I take it out walking with the dog. Honestly, this is my go-to shawl and this wool, which is from Cascade, 
yarns is very, very durable. It does pill a little bit, you know, so you got to glean it every now and then, scrape it all off. But this has been my most worn garment. So I wanted to share that with you because, hey, you know, that's what this podcast is all about. But anyway, I love this shawl, but it's a little bit too warm to be wearing it. So don't mind me if I take it off and I'm just going to put it aside and we're going to talk about what's in the box of yarn. So if we're looking at this box, are you ready? I'm going to open it up. So bear with me. I've never done this before on a video, but I am going to try and open a box of yarn and I don't know the best way to do this. Perhaps I should start by putting on my glasses. Here we go. Are you ready, folks? Um, so that what is the story? While I'm opening it, I'll tell you the story. So as you know from previous episodes, if you've watched them, that last year, this time, my husband and I went to um, Spain. And we were there for four months. Estepona, Spain. And we so we spent Christmas in Spain, away from the family, etc. And it was sort of our retirement trip. And we had an absolute blast. But while I was there, I did some yarn retail therapy, missing everybody, not knowing any knitters there. Um, knitting wasn't isn't such a big thing. There was a, a couple of yarn shops in Estepona, Spain, but they don't do knit nights. Knit night is a very North American or European thing. I'm not too sure. But in Spain, well, in the part of Spain that I was, they did not do knit nights. The yarn stores did not support that at all. Needless to say, I bought yarn online. Um, I bought yarn and I had it shipped to Spain and that cost me a fortune. So I thought, okay, never, not going to do that again. I will buy the yarn and have it shipped to our post office box in the United States, in Washington, in Blaine, Washington, because we live right, um, literally it takes me 10 minutes to get to Blaine. So we're right on the border of Blaine, Washington. And we have a post office box there, which allows me to purchase some stuff. And oh, this is hard to open, oh my goodness. And so no sooner did we get back from Spain, we didn't come back until the beginning of March. And that was, we literally, we landed on the tarmac two or three days before they closed everything down because of COVID. Not only did Spain close everything down because of COVID, but by March 15th, everything here in Vancouver and Surrey was closed down and we weren't allowed to cross the border. So needless to say, I had all this yarn coming to the night, to my post office box in Blaine <laughs> and we get regular updates on, on what, what they're doing with the borders and whether or not they're going to allow you to cross the border. And so every month they report and they're like, no, we're going to, we're going to extend the closure for another month, for another month. And I thought, oh my goodness. Well, surely this was in March, April. Now I'm looking at yarns that I want to purchase. Surely by, you know, summer, the board, the borders will be open, order a bit more yarn. Then come the summer. Oh, surely by the fall, the borders will be open buy a little bit more yarn. Now it's the fall. Oh my gosh, it doesn't look like COVID's getting any better. Doesn't look like we're going to actually get to go over the border this year at all. I don't even remember what I purchased. I keep records, but I haven't looked because I wanted this box to sort of be a surprise for all of us as we're watching it. But I phoned, I phoned the post office place and I said, you know what, I feel bad. I've got all this yarn sitting there and I, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to drive over the border and pick it up. And they're like, no problem, we'll ship it to you. And I'm like, great, you know, get, get me a quote and let, let's talk about it. So they got me a quote. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I think the quote to ship this parcel to me was um, more than half of the yarn that's in this box. That was one thing. It cost like $135. And I live 10 minutes away. So go figure. Then I thought, okay, fine, fair enough. I don't think, uh, you know, I want the yarn. Um, so I will have to redo my budget, my yarn spending budget. Maybe there's a, a month that I don't buy any yarn at all. Then I get whacked with duty. $80 in duty. Most of my viewers are American, so I'd love to hear from you. When you order from Canada, if any of you, one, have you ordered from a Canadian dyer? And two, if you do order from a Canadian dyer, do you get charged duty because it's textiles? 
honestly, I think we need to petition our mutual governments and say, hey, couldn't you support the cottage industries of indie dyers and not charge duty on yarn? It's not a garment. <laughs> I'm not buying made clothing. I have to do all the work. But $80 in duty. Oh my God. So hence, this is the most, ex ooh, most expensive. Ooh, this is exciting. The most expensive yarn. Okay. Sorry for the crackling and crinkling. There's going to be a lot of it. Oh, they tape this thing so that nobody can get into it. Holy camoly. Okay, more scissors. I apologize. I might try to put this to music or something, depending on how it goes. Because they have... Oh, I hope to goodness I'm not cutting yarn. That was dangerous. Oh my gosh, that was dangerous. I might have cut the yarn. I don't know. Okay, so here we go. Opening it up. The first bit of yarn is from Dragon... Oh, I remember this. This is from Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarns. Look at this. I have to get the card. This is so exciting. So this, oh, it's beautiful. I don't remember ordering this at all. What is this called? Oh, sorry. I should show it to you. <laughs> I should show it so you can see. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh, wow. Is that ever exciting? So this is, I have to put my glasses on, folks. I apologize, but Okay, so this is Dragon Horde Yarns, Tristan, uh, and this is the Fairy Tale DK 100% Superwash Merino in the Pool of Starlight. And I think this is part of the Sabrina collection. Hmm, why do I think that? She has a whole Sabrina collection, but that's Pool of Starlight along with the mohair. I must have been thinking about making a hat. <gasps> Look at that, but this is very Christmassy to me. Ooh, this is very Christmassy to me. I don't know, guys, what do you think? Pool of, okay, Bu I can't, okay, I can't tell you that. Uh, can't even, so pretty, oh my goodness. Okay, what else do I have in here? I have, okay, this, This is Shop of Lemonade. Now, this is interesting because this is not a color that I would normally gravitate towards. And I'm going to show it to you in a second. So this is, I think this must have been in, in support of something. Uh, thank you for your order. This is the Lemonade Shop. Pardon me, the Lemonade Shop. And this is, this is the color. So what is this? So I'll show you. This is a dusty pink, just a baby pink and a gray. Oh, I think maybe I do like this. I don't know if that's showing. Oh, there you go. That's showing a little bit better. But this again is the Lemonade Shop. This is the Cashmere Luxe Sock. Oh, I know why I bought it. I love you, Patrick. Don't take this the wrong way. I just fell in love with the name of this yarn. I love my dog more than I love you. <laughs> it's not true, but I just absolutely love the name of it. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. I wonder if he's going to watch this podcast. It's 80% superwash, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Okay, that's why I bought that one. See, this is so much fun. I had no idea. All of the stuff I bought in Spain. Oh, I've got an advent in here. Ooh. Oh. Oh, oh. I have an advent in here, people. Oh my goodness. What kind of an advent do I have? And the only reason I know it's an advent is because it's got numbers on it. Okay, that's weird. Somebody must have opened it. Because somebody must have opened it because it's not in a package. Okay, what is it? Okay, I don't remember what this is. What is this? It's from a Busy Life hand-dyed yarn from Colorado. Nanette Bergerson. Nanette Bergerson. Wow. Okay, this... Oh, this is a Halloween at... <laughs> okay, I should have gotten my parcel a little bit sooner. This is a Halloween advent I ordered a long, long time ago thinking by October or by September, I should be able to cross the border 
Okay, I'm not going to order this. Pardon me, I'm not going to open this. This, so I don't know, does this go with this? Is this all part of the same thing? Maybe. I'm not going to open this because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until next Halloween and then I'm going to open it. So stay tuned. If anybody is still watching me, <laughs> then I am going to ha I have a Halloween advent. How exciting is that? Oh my goodness. Okay, so what else do I have in Oh, I've got more stuff in here. It looks like it's all Advent stuff. What is this? Sorry about the crinkling. Uh, Molly Klein Design Sweet Tea Yarns Monsters Ink Minis. Because oh, I love Monsters Ink. Look at, oh, it's, there you go. Look at these beautiful minis. Oh, I just think they're fantastic. Monsters Inc. I don't know why I would have purchased that. I don't know why I would have purchased minis. Maybe it's because I was watching Monsters Inc. But maybe that was also maybe Halloween-y I was thinking. Because those are kind of Halloween ca colors. Don't you think that those are Halloween colors? I think that those are Halloween colors. Okay, so I'm going to put that away for next year. Okay. And this looks like an advent and again I don't remember ordering an advent calendar I have ordered advent calendars for this year but what is this who is this again this has been opened and there's no oh this is a Harry Potter advent Oh, this is a Harry Potter advent. Oh, I think it's a Harry Potter advent, but I have absolutely no way of knowing. Oh, 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 oh. I think I see a Hugh Loco something in here. I can barely see the, through the package. Oh my goodness, people. I have an advent. I have an advent that was from last year. She sent candies. So this is, I think her name is Nicole. Nicole from uh, Hugh Loco. So I, I bought an advent, apparently, but obviously this has all been opened. Customs must have opened it and taken out all the tags. So I hope I have it all here. Um, so that was where my $80 went, I guess, was to make sure that there was nothing funny in here. That is so exciting. Oh my goodness. So I have an ad I can't, I can't open it, but I will open, I will open this advent, um, in December, I guess. So I was thinking about doing a, um, a vlogmas. It's a huge commitment. I'm not hundred percent sure I'm up for that. Um, I love Vlogmas and I discovered Vlogmas in Spain last year. It was probably the most Christmassy thing that I did um, last year was to watch Vlogmas. And I have to say Caroline from Dunderknit, oh my goodness, has one of the best. Um, Amy from Stranded Dye Works did a wonderful vlog. Uh... Who else? Joanna from Stitching the High Notes did an amazing uh, vlogmas. Oh, and uh, I want to say Ellie from Skein Deer. Is it Ellie? I hope her name is Ellie from Skein Deer Knits did another uh, vlogmas. So those are the four vlogmases that I watched every every day. It put me really into the Christmas spirit. And I admired it so much and I thought, oh my goodness, that is a lot of work, but I got so much enjoyment out of watching them that I thought, hey, maybe that's something that I could then give to my viewers if you, you know, needing a little bit of an infusion of Christmas spirit. I just have to think about it and plan it because, like I said, it's a, it's a big commitment and it's 25 days. You're doing Vlogmas every day, except for Christmas Day, I think. Um, but I now have an advent. I have two more advents. I bought an advent from Sweet Skein of Mine. And I bought an admin from Ginger Snap Yarns. So I didn't, because I did not remember I bought one. So I have three admins. 
What I would say about advent calendars is this year was probably my year of spending. I planned on not spending any money on yarn this year. <laughs> this was my big spend on yarn this year. I can't repeat that every year. I have to be a lot more um, thoughtful about how I spend my money going forward. But I loved every minute of it and I'm going to enjoy these advents. But I'm also going to look for ways to um, do different things for Advent uh, rather than just the yarn. But I will share this with you at some point in December, if not every day, then at least a couple of times during, during the month. So that was my expensive yarn. And not only apparently was it expensive yarn, because I did not realize I had ad an Advent in here, like a full one. Ugh. And I don't know if you know Advents at all, but they're not, they're not inexpensive. And they're not something that... Um, is in everybody's budget. So as I mentioned in my last podcast, if you subscribe to Helen Stewart of Curious, um, CuriousHandmade.com, if you subscribe to her newsletter, you can get the ebook on how to make your own advent. I subscribed to that ebook, or I subscribed to her newsletter. I got the ebook. So next year, I'm going to be making my own advent calendars out of all my scrap yarn, and I'm gonna find people that we can trade so we can trade advents and still have so I might purchase one advent you know from an indie dyer because I do like to support um, the art and the science in this industry but I think I might um, it'll be fun to to have a more cost-effective way of doing it as well and maybe I can include more people so that is that okay so that was my big yarn thing the other thing I would like to say about yarn is thank you to all of my viewers who gave me a list of Canadian dyers. The reason I was so interested in Canadian dyers is one, apparently I'm getting charged huge duty <laughs> um, to actually import yarn from the United States. Uh, but also the exchange rate is not favorable for us and we have amazing dyers in Canada as well none very few of whom that I knew so I was on a mission this year to find Canadian dyers and I'm going to do another episode on the yarns that I've purchased this year from Canadian dyers so that is what the goal was for this video and for potentially another video going forward Anyway, that is all I had to share regarding the yarn. And just before I sign off today, I wanted to remind everybody that we are having a knit along joint with Through the Back Loop podcast with Peggy and her viewers. And it is knit any sweater uh, garment, sweater garment uh, that's festive for you, whatever festive sounds or looks like to you between now and December 31st. And we're going to choose some winners uh, just by random uh, draw of comments on in and posts on Instagram. So the hashtag for Instagram for the knit along for uh, the sweater garment is festive 20 back loop and festive 20 fun of knit. So hashtag on both of those. I'll put the, those that notes in the description box. So if you are already working on either gifts uh, or a knit for yourself that is a sweater or a garment that you are going to finish by December 31st and it's festive to you, then by all means post it on Instagram, the finished pro uh, object, and we will be doing uh, draws, true two prizes to win. So make, sh make sure you do both hashtags uh, because we're drawing from both of them. So that is uh, exciting. The other, I'm actually, <laughs> okay, confession. Uh, I am knitting the pink velvet. Uh, Peggy waited for me to start the pink velvet with her and this is my Christmas sweater. This is, um, I think this is Malabrigo. I can't remember the yarn name at the moment, um, but I will tell you uh, in my show notes. And this is a beautiful uh, Surrey alpaca just in off-white. And that is going to be my pink velvet and I've cast it on. I've tried the tubular cast on three times. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do because me and the tubular cast on don't seem to agree with each other. So I'm going to give it a fourth try. If it doesn't work a fourth time, I'm going to have to do some other kind of a cast on. So I don't know why it doesn't work for me. I find it very difficult. I'm not 
dexterous enough, I, I guess, I don't know. But needless to say, so my festive knit is going to be the pink velvet, uh, and I am giving it a good try to get started. So um, if you haven't started your garment yet, don't feel bad, I haven't either. But you also could choose a whip that is less than 50% done, so don't forget that. I'm also giving away some prizes for just festive knits as a whole. So if you are knitting ornaments, or you are knitting Christmas gift hats, or you are knitting socks that are Christmas themed, or festive themed, or seasonal themed, um, regardless of how you celebrate the season, um, that is a different cow that I'm hosting, and that's just for the fun of knit, and that is Festive Knits 2020. So hashtag Festive Knits 2020. So for both of those knit alongs, they're Instagram, but you can also join on my Ravelry page under Nena Knits if you're not on Instagram. So check out my the Ravelry page, the Ravelry group for the fun of knit. So it's the fun of knit Ravelry group, and you will get all the details of both of those knit alongs, and you can enter through Ravelry as well. If you do not do Ravelry, and you are not on Instagram, you can always email me a picture of your um, finished object. I'd like to be as inclusive as I can. And that would be nenanits at gmail.com. And I'll include all of that below in the description notes. Anyway, on that note, I hope everybody is keeping safe, keeping calm. Remember, it's really tough times right now. Be kind to each other. I hope you enjoyed this yarny episode. I will happily do more. If you like this one, please let me know that you like this type of a video. Uh, either a thumbs up or a comment, like please, yeah, do another one with yarn. And I will happily do another one, um, a short video just on yarn. If there's something you'd like to know more about, if I didn't go in enough detail, or if there's something specific you would like to know, for example, as I'm speaking, I'm thinking maybe I should tell you about the dyers a little bit so that you get to know the actual dyer as well. That might be something I could add. But either way, hope you enjoyed it. Please stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and certainly thank you so much for taking the time to uh, watch the video, and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.